So part two, we're going to continue on in my bird garden, into the rainbow garden, and then I end up wandering into Gary's garden, and we get to see some special treats in there that I didn't even know was there. So join me in part two. Hello, it's Robbie from Southern California. We are now in the bird garden. Warning, I haven't done any planting yet as far as plants. I still have kitchen scraps underwater because we've had a lot of rain so keep that in mind but I am analyzing what I want to do in here because I'm going to have to do it soon but it there's no hurry you know gardening isn't a race you work your garden at your own pace keep that in mind it's not a race this is plain old tree collared real tree collared it's broke this is why I want to get everything set up for propagating it's got a little bit of purple on this one. That's interesting. But see how it's broke? It's too top heavy. This one's about ready to come out. So when I'm ready to take it out, I want to get those totes redone so I can get them in there. See how I've got them growing in a tote but in two pots? The pot there has a big hole on the bottom and then it's planted in another pot. So I gave it all that extra soil and the tote because it's, those are really small totes. They're not 18 gallons. They're real small. See all these shoots? These are all new plants. All that is new plants. And I want to start propagating a lot because this stuff, powdery mildew and all, is the best plant food. You can either just put it in your containers just as, as it is, or you can drop it in water and let it rot for a couple days. This is the best plant food. I'm telling you it's the best fertilizer. It works for me. Again, if you're using comfrey, that's fine. But I want something in my yard with everything going on that I can eat if I want. And that makes the best coleslaw. Oh my gosh. And it's so easy. I don't even have to cut it by hand. Go back and look in the video. It is fantastic. So I get double duty out of that. You can dry it. I was never big on kale chips and collard chips. But you can dry it. You can steam it and use it as a wrap. I wasn't real big on that. Maybe I needed to do it a few more times. But the coleslaw I'm making, that I'm just crazy about. So I can eat that as well as use it for compost. Keep that in mind. That's very important to me. There's purple tree colored back there. Now what's really interesting is see my dinosaur kale? See all the holes? That is birds. The birds, look at this, all through here. It looks like lace. They sit there, the gold finches, the house finches, the white crowns. They sit there and just nibble away. Nibble them a little. It's so funny. And I let them do what they want because as soon as I figure out what I want, all this has to be trimmed and propagated. I'm going to just cover it with tool. I'm going to clean this up when I'm ready. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to cover the part that I want with tool. They won't bother with it. And what I don't cover, they'll be able to nibble on, but they don't like collard. So that's something that's good for me. The deer do, but deer don't come in here. The birds do not like collard. Here are those totes that are now, I think they're about five years old. They are doing really good. We moved them, we had them over by the house, and then we moved them a couple years ago here, and this is where they'll stay. They need to be freshened up. And when I get in here, I'll do that. These upside down planters, I haven't touched them in years. I want to freshen them up. I started putting cuttings. That's an actual, is this a blue dazzling kale? I don't know I got. Really needs to be taken out, given a good pot somewhere. It's so beautiful. And I was using it for cuttings. So I want to freshen this all up. Here's my poor mushroom plant. Oh, it's making a big comeback from the bottom. So all this is a mess, so I will get to that. This is a broccoli, again. You know who needs broccoli? So I'll get some broccoli off and bring it in for Kitty. My Yorkie loves broccoli, I'm tripping on this. Oh, we'll talk about these branches that Gary's bringing me. And here's another purple tree colored. See, I just stuck that in a pot. I had a pot, put a piece in there, and the thing just took off. So purple or green, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is perfect for making fertilizer too. Absolutely, I put these in there a while ago. I doubt they've done anything. It was cuttings. I didn't have the heart to compost them, but I think I will start fresh and I will compost that. So these are absolutely perfect for fertilizer. If you're thinking of fertilizer for your garden, again, you put them in a bucket. Look at this. You want to see something? 
This is collard leaves. You ready? Kale leaves, and they've been in here for like three months. Ready? With a lid. That's it. They're gone. The water is murky. It doesn't smell. It just completely disintegrated. I've been watering the plant. You know what I've been watering? That tree collard. I take a scooper. I come over here, grab a bunch of scoopers off of it, and I've been feeding it, and that thing has just gotten so big it's breaking. So keep that in mind. It, there's no time limit on when you have to use it. As long as you've got it covered, you want to have mosquitoes, go for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you use it in two days. It doesn't matter if you use it in three months. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing there. There's the dragon fruit. It's back there. I want to clear all that out so I can get to the pot. Dragon fruit is in a pot, but the pot is open, so it sends its roots into the ground. And this thing is all over the place. Can you imagine I told Gary once I want it out? It, I mean, I've got to be careful. It's spiky. It is all over. It's going through my kale and everything. This is a plant that came up. It's a hybrid. It's one of my favorite hybrids. See how the leaves are thinner than the regular collard? Really good to eat. See how nice they are? Really green. Thinner. Collard is a little thicker. Even dinosaur kale is a little thicker. It's a very soft leaf, but it's really good to eat. Also good to compost, but I think the collard leaf being so thick, it just composts really, really good. So there's another cutting. See, I started cutting in there on the pot. So I planted that in the ground. I do plant in the ground, see? I put a bunch of leaves in there, dug a hole, dropped it in there, and now it's overgrown too. Aren't these beautiful? Oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. I, had, I just couldn't resist. It was the only one at the nursery. They didn't have a, a steak, so I don't know exactly the exact name of it, but I think I looked it up. It's easy to find some pansies. I'm going to be setting all this up, but anyways. Let's go back there. Here's another. This is a hybrid. See how thin the leaves are? They're not as thick, but okay. Great to eat. Cut them up, stir fry them, put, put them on a pan with butter, boil them, uh, bring it to a boil, and then strain it, eat it that way. There's so many things you can do with collard, especially the thinner ones that start getting hybrids in your yard. You can cut it, uh, cut it up, boil it up, strain it, get all the water out of it, mix in a couple eggs, a little bit of your favorite flour, a little salt, a little pepper, fry it up as patties. They're so good. Want to make meal out of it? Throw some chicken or meat in it if, you're, if you eat meat. So good. There's so many things you can do with it. Uh, this, let's see, this is just the pot. I made Gary stop. We were driving. It's all split open in the back. I don't care. I lined it a little bit and this is doing really good. There's my roses and then there is See, it's, see, a lot of this stuff gets so top-heavy it breaks. Again, this is probably a kale hybrid. Then I've got, this is papaya. It's growing, I've got to be careful. I'm going to grab a bee. I've done that before, once. See the papaya? I put the papaya here. It was in a tote. I brought it over here. I planted it, and they may make it. That would be really cool. Let me step back. Because like I said, there's not a whole lot going on except for the gazebo. This is the gazebo that Gary brought home and this is where I told you I was going to put it it's going in the bird garden so it's here he now has put the four corners there it was not this big and it doesn't matter we're using the four corners I am not using the top now let me step back and explain what I'm doing here and it's not cleaned up it was just placed here what I'm doing now is I am putting branches from trees. I'm zip tying up and will com be coming back with wire. The zip tie, let me move this over, is my hand right now, my third hand to hold it until I decide how I want to put it. Same thing there. And as soon as I decide how I like it, I will go back and with a good wire, I will put wire. I have put some in the back. I use the forks. The, see the fork, like the fork on the road. I can put branches through there, over there. See the branch back there. It's going through the fork. I'm doing a crisscross. I am nowhere near done. I want to do more crisscross. Now with all these crisscross branches all the way across, back and forth, I can hang feeders, hummingbird feeders, bird feeders, but that's not the main reason. And then I'll have all my water features under here too. This will keep the hawks out. I have seen them swoop through here. They have to swoop when they hunt. 
They're not walking over to a bird. They have to swoop. So they need to go down, catch the bird, and go up. They can hit the ground and go up, but they need to know where they're going. They have very good eyesight. Let's step over here. By doing this, you're now broken up the pattern in which they can swoop in. So by the time they swoop or try, the birds that are around will already see them or hear them because they now have to maneuver through a maze. They don't want a maze. They rarely hunt in trees. They hunt when the birds are out in the open, usually. I mean, they can, but usually. And this is going to deter a lot of them. So I'm going to do more crisscrossing all the way through here. And then I may lay some stuff here for the summer because this is such a hot garden because it's facing south that I can create some shade for the birds too so they can come in here and feed. I'm going to have more flowers in here, more tree collared in here. I want to plant more in the back. There's a purple tree colored back there, but I went to the other side of the fence. And get it really lush for the birds and kind of maybe, see here's a tree colored. Just give them shade for the hot summer day. See this one went straight up. It's in a pot. Is it a pot down there? So it's kind of, that's my idea on this. And I want to just make it look nice and very inviting for the birds. Even though, to be honest, it, it's really for me because the birds only care about really a couple things in here. Water, number one, they need water to drink. And of course they take baths. Number two, they need food. They come here for the food. Whether it's the seed I put out or the greens that they like. Notice they don't chew on any of the, any of the collard. They will chew on the kale. The dinosaur kale they'll chew on. They won't chew on any of anything that's been hybridized with the tree collard or collard, they don't like. That doesn't mean they're not gonna change their taste. They like squash leaves, zucchini leaves. Oh, he's birds flying around there. So they could change their taste, but right now this is the only one, the dinosaur kale. But they actually, yeah, they are. They're eating the tops off here. They'll come in here and sit and eat. So they're coming in here for water, food, and now they're gonna have shelter and hopefully some shade later on. So that's what's going on here. I'm gonna move another water feature here. I'll clean that one up. That's my candlestick. I absolutely love my candlestick. Keep an eye out at the thrift stores for fancy candlesticks. You can make a hole in it and make a beautiful water feature. That's, these are going to be cleaned up. They're old already. That's an old kid's globe. Just in a bowl I found at the thrift store. It's got a lot of algae. Don't worry about algae as long as you rinse them out. The algae is not going to hurt anything. Think about lakes and ponds. The algae is natural. But I want to clean that up. That's Like I said, that's a globe. And that's half a globe. I need to pull that pot out on the bottom anyways and get something. Oh! See? You helped me out. On the bottom there, I think I'm going to put those polka dot plants. This will be perfect because it gets so much shade. Everything dies back because it's just too shady under there. So I'll put the polka dot plant. And this is my emu plant, my emu bush. And this one throws like little yellow flowers. It's still in the pot. So I'm going to get that planted. So that's what's going on here, but this is the reason I wanted the gazebo, because I want to keep the sharp shin hawks out of here. Cooper hawks tend to go more after small rodents, but you know, I just want to keep them out. There's my ball. We're going to make more balls. Really fun balls. I've got more fountains I'm going to make out of balls. And then see the birds are eating the Swiss chard. See how they've eaten the Swiss chard to nothing? I haven't moved back these totes yet. When we had that plumbing thing going on, I, they came from here, and I don't know if I want them here anymore. I kind of like it open. Here is that table I was telling you about, the TV table. These containers are less than $3 at Walmart. You can grow a whole lot in there. That is four and a half gallons. That's celery, and then this is the lemon balm that I bought at, bought at the grocery store a few years ago. And then I split it because it got so big and it needs to be split again. And this is celery. And remember, celery really does pull. I have never dug up the sweet potato yet. I really need to do something. If I'm not going to eat the sweet potato, I should be using the leaves in my green drink. Then I don't need it. But right now I'm going to leave it. These two, I haven't done anything. It's been this way for probably two years. I should get the walking onions out that I want. This is nothing. Just a weed. And then get rid of... Maybe this celery. It's too old. It'll be too tough. There's some sage on the bottom. I should freshen that pot. Maybe even find a new home for it. And then what's over here? That's about it. Like I said, I haven't done anything. This is the hybrid plant that grew. I think it's a three-way. I do think it's dazzling blue kale. 
collared and dinosaur kale because of the leaf shape and I like it. I've been taking cuttings off of that. I looked at the plants and I've had a lot of, um, you know, aphids on it. And yes, the bush tits come in, but they've been kind of too many, I think, in my opinion. And then I analyzed, why was my garden different last year than it was the year before? I had to stop and think. I had a really good hose nozzle that had a good sprayer on it. And I don't have one out here. I just go with the regular hose, which is fine, but it's not going to do anything. I just go through and I hose. But with the nozzle, here in Southern California, you want to do it in the morning because you'll get a lot of powdery mildew. You spray the dickens out of it. Once the bugs take off in the air and they land somewhere else, you're going to get rid of 80% of them. And then the birds will come in and get the rest. And I forgot. I completely forgot it broke. And I never got another one. This year I did. I went and bought a really nice one. I went to the store. See the hummingbird back there? I went to the store and I decided which one would work better for me. And I bought it and that's what I'm going to do. Sometimes just hosing off your plants. If you're in an area where you get a lot of powdery mildew, do it in the morning so the plant has a chance to dry. If you do it at night, then it stays wet all night and then it will start to get powdery mildew. And then it, by the next day you have more and more growing. So do it at night. You can wash powdery mildew off too, but you do it in the morning. If you have too much powdery mildew on the leaves, let's say these, just snap them off. You know what I say? If you're not going to eat it, take it off and compost it. Don't worry. It's not going to, you're not going to spread it by composting it. When it's off, it can't live anymore. It needs the plant. I don't worry about it. Look how beautiful this is coming up. Brand new. Look at this. See the bugs? If I had my hose out here, you just spray it. It's gone. You don't need any insecticide. You don't need neem oil. A lot of you have asked me about neem oil. Is it organic? Is it safe? It's safe for people. It's toxic to insects, and that includes your bees. It's toxic to bees. It's toxic to anything that gets on it. That's why people use it. But it is safe for us. See how beautiful? And there it is. Now, I leave, the, see, if you look, these leaves are really nice. But this one's got a bunch. Now these probably just showed up. What's going to happen is the bush tits are going to come in here. And when I say the bush tits, those tiny little birds, they don't just come in as one. There could be 30, 50 of them. And they'll get in there and they'll clean it off. And when they're gone, so are most of the insects. It's so fun to watch. So that's what's going on in here, which is nothing because I haven't done anything yet. But I do plan on getting to this really, really soon. As soon as I... Finish my wall garden, finish my box garden. I'm starting to jump around a little bit. I want this out. These are too old. I think some of them might be cracking. If they're cracking really bad, I'm gonna get rid of them, see? You get these at the dollar stores. They're okay, but there's not a lot of soil. And what happens in here in Southern California, they dry out so fast. Can you believe these came up from seed? And they're still hanging in there, look at this. But here's the thing, some people will tell you, you can grow 50 plants in one container like that. Yeah, you can, but they're gonna be small. So it's up to you how you wanna grow. There's very little soil. They still need a root system. You still need to feed them. And if they don't get a big enough root system, you're gonna have small plants. If you want little plants, that's fine. I want bigger plants. But this is good because I can pull that. I've done it with a lot of these. I've had them in these containers and they're small. I stick them either in a flower pot or in the ground. I've got, I've got these in flower pots in the ground. Oh, this is coming back. I'm so excited. Oh, this is that plant I like, that three-way hybrid. And a branch broke off and I put it in a flower pot. There's a hole in there, a big hole. And I've been taking care of it and watering it. It's been sitting dormant for the longest time. And look at that. I'm so excited. I thought I saw it the other day turning green. That means it is set root. Cool. I like flower pots because I won't get gophers around there. I don't really have gophers here, but I wouldn't get gophers. I do have moles, so I won't get a mole in there because of the flower pot. And the other thing is it gets direct water. So if I had, let's say I was going to water this four o'clock flower, I could water it, but the water may have an underground tunnel by a mole, ants, insects, and the water may leave. If it leaves, then the plant's not really getting much water. But when you have a flower pot in the ground like that, it is getting water. 
It may leave later, but it is getting water. And that's why it works so well. Look at the tree colors that are coming up, all from cuttings because they've been put in a flower pot. So that's why I do flower pots in the ground. Just make sure you have big enough holes. If you make too tiny of a hole, you can end up drowning your own plant. Not by tree roots from other trees, but from themselves, trying to get the roots through the tiny, tiny little holes. And then what happens is the root will get bigger and bigger. It can block and then it starts to hold too much water and then it will rot the plant. So if you ever see a plant start rotting out, you can't figure out what it is. Your own plant might have blocked the holes. So make sure if you're going to put it in the ground, it's got big enough holes that that won't happen. If you catch it in time, you could make bigger holes and get rid of the water. I've done that too. So that's it. This is going to be changed up too when I get to it. And I'm going to probably put either totes on chairs or totes on bricks, cement blocks, I'm not sure. And look, you can grow a dozen papaya or a half a dozen papaya in a small 18 gallon tote. And by the time they grow, your 18 gallon tote looks like it's a 50 gallon tote. It was not planned. They came up in my compost. I left them. I'll get to them another time, another time. And by then, they set root into the ground. Gary did make holes, and they've got a really big root. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can. I'm telling you the roots. Take my word for it. I don't want to. Oh, there's earthworms. Well, it's further down now. They've got a root way down there, so they have left the tote. But they're doing fantastic. I have no intentions of moving them or doing anything with them. That's it. And then Gary's not doing much in the room. I think he's got some seedlings. Look at this. Watermelon. All those watermelon in there for the price of one. I got to do the video on that. How I separated them and now I've got watermelon plant and here's my issue. Even having all that watermelon, it's still the wrong time of the year. They need it really warm at night. So I've got ideas on how I'm going to plant them because really I analyze, we don't plant watermelon until we get the plants going and then they start taking off in July. By September, we have a lot of watermelon. Mint, chocolate mint. This is just a purple kale. And then I've got a few onions in there. Not much. Again, I haven't done anything here because I'm not sure what I want to do in here. So I've kind of just waited until I get to it. I want to get the bird garden done and then little by little get through here. Get Move these totes. It's got great soil in it. Move these great big totes. That one's probably a 27, 30 gallon. And then decide how I want to set this up because I'm still not sure how. Like I said, gardening is not a race. Gardening is an everyday fun hobby to do as you want. And it's very important for me this year to get as much food growing as possible. Let's go out the gate. I should talk about that. Deer don't eat rosemary. Okay. But you better tell the rest of the story when you post online that deer don't eat rosemary. What deer do do is make a bed out of it and sleep in rosemary. So the deer come in here and sleep in it. I think it gets rid of some of their ticks. The smell, they love sleeping in there. I haven't gotten the, you know, any photos of them doing it, but then I see them get up in the morning on my camera because the camera doesn't quite get them on there and then they walk through. So some of the deer have been sleeping there. See how they mashed it down? Boy, did they break it. And they did it to the other rosemary, but it's behind the bottle brush. So it must be just a safe place. Oh, I can see on the other side too. So they're sleeping on both sides of my poor rosemary plant. This side there and then back there. That's okay. But they may not eat it, but they do like to sleep in it. Look at this. This plant is coming from the other side in that bucket. That's a five gallon bucket. And here is my San Marzano tomatoes. Isn't that gorgeous? Making a comeback. See how it's coming over? An old vine. I think this vine is almost two years old. That one's gone. So has a tomato on it. But it's, they started again. See the flowers? Isn't that cool? So I'm going to leave it. There's no reason to take it out, but I'll get some better plants. One year I did grow up here cucumbers. I'm not sure if I'll do that. Maybe I'll just put it later on. Maybe I'll move some, one of those totes here. That's an idea because I'm going to have extra large totes. Maybe I'll prop up a large tote here and then have something growing here. Okay, papayas. We had some freeze. 
and it took out a lot of those leaves, but they're making a comeback, and we've been eating papayas. I thought at first we were going to lose this, this beautiful giant papaya tree. I know it's not a tree. I'm being attacked by hummingbirds. They're actually zipping around me. But we didn't. It's making a comeback. Look how this grew. It was in a flower pot. I dragged the flower pot here years ago. Sat it here. It broke through. The roots are going everywhere. This is a tr kind of a trash can thing that Gary cut in half years ago. And what I do in there is I compost in there. See all the leaves? And I water in there. So when I water in there, it's feeding the uh, papaya. And papayas are heavy feeders. If you don't feed them, and they don't have enough nutrients, because look at the fruit, then they won't produce. And what would happen in, you know, nature is those big fruit would fall, smash to the ground. All the animals would come and eat the papaya and it'd be rotting in the ground and it feeds the plant. So this is what I was gonna show you here. This, I think I told you in the video, it wasn't gonna make it. I pulled those out, no roots, and stuck them in there. And even though they're green, they were drooping over. And see how they've been chewed off? I figured out the deer were eating it because they grabbed some of these. This was about a week ago, maybe a little over a week. So I put tool over it and stopped them. So the deer here do not, see what they did? See, they started chewing on it. So I put the tool, I only put the trash can around it because I had it sitting here. But the tool stopped them because I just put the trash can there. So they don't like the feel of it. So you think about it, the deer come up, they've never seen tool. Ew, what is this stuff? And they look over and they walk away. I mean, it's not like they're starving. They have other things they could go do. So the tool worked here for deer. So if you got deer, try it and see what happens. I might get some other papaya in there. I'm gonna set up this tote. It's just got a little bit of stuff in it, even though, see, there's an old papaya that rotted and fell down, I put in there. But that I water and it goes into the ground there and then it feeds the papaya. Same thing there, there's another small tote. It feeds the papaya. And the same thing there with that one, feeds the papaya. We'll get into this another time because I actually have a video I think I just put together on that. And that is, let's just put it this way, it's a half a tote. Okay, we're almost done. Let's walk into the rainbow garden. Here is the back side of the rainbow garden. Not impressive. I'm thinking of putting something along here. I was thinking of it last year, I never got to it. I haven't set up anything in that car. I don't even need the car. I might put a bucket in there and move around some lettuce in the summer. I don't know. But that's the backside. Here's the strawberries. I love the strawberries. I love this chair. I've got the video on how I did it. Just a chair from the thrift store, from the trash. I love that I can turn it. And if you're on a deck or a patio, you can turn it so that it gets sunlight. It's just turn it with your finger. Look at that. I just love that. And I keep getting strawberries. I'm not getting a ton of them, so I make a fruit salad. So I use some pepinos that I have down there. I use some papaya and a few strawberries, chop it up, and we have that as a fruit salad. And it works out really good. Need to freshen that up and get something growing. I didn't really grow in that last year. And I don't want water. I have water because of the rain, but I'm going to get plants along here soon. Let's see what's over here before I keep going. The strawberries too, I gotta freshen them up, clean them up. The top ones are starting. Oh, looky, looky. Yep, it's doing okay. And then I've got my potato mint. I really, oh, it's starting to grow. Not a good thing. I wanna get through there and pick the potato mint. Go through the potatoes. They're little potatoes. You can eat them raw or cooked and they taste like potatoes. And I wanna get more in there because really nothing went in there. I want both of these to have potato mint. Because I found out potato mint here, this is really weird, in Southern California, likes the hottest area. This is so blessed hot, the sun sets up there. This ha gets the afternoon sun, and they love that. Put them in the shade, they don't grow. Put them in the hottest part of the area, they grow. They get sun all afternoon, and they love it. So early, early afternoon, all afternoon. And then these are just last year's garlic. This is nothing, these are just buckets. Last year's garlic, and I really need, oh my gosh. You know, I didn't see that, because I haven't paid attention. Maybe strawberry plants got in here. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know they were there. So anyways, that's what's going on here. There's the fig tree, there's a cement ball I made. I haven't used it yet. I should put that in one of the ponds or the bathtub. 
There's my bucket. That's that broken chair. So the chair's got the fig tree growing through it. This is just something you get from the nursery when you buy plants. You got a green bucket underneath. Lift it off, wash it. And there's my solar panel. And there's my fig tree. Isn't that cool? Grown from seed. Thank goodness it tastes good. Because a lot of times they don't when you grow them from seed. Haven't done anything here yet. I'm getting really, really close. This is the leftover beets. So I've got some beets I've got to pull out. I know I saw some the other day. I know I pulled some. I mean, these are the beets, but I mean, there it is, see? So I need to get the, beet, the big beets out. And then this is, I know, because I labeled it, zucchini. In the beginning, when I first put the seedling out, I did it in the plastic bag, and then I moved it out here as soon as I knew it was rooted. I had this over it. Just a plain old milk carton type thing. This will protect it from birds because the birds love when the, the new leaves. They love seedlings. I mean, think about it. Birds love sprouted seed. That's a sprouted seed. It's microgreens. They love that. So I kept it covered. And then once the leaves start coming up, you can move that off. It also will protect it if you've got roly polies hanging around. By just putting that, they don't crawl the plastic. They go around. They're not real smart. So they're not going to come and look. Oh, what? she's got something under there. I'm going to put... No, they just walk around and they leave. But since I've got this extra top, and I'm going to be making a ton of these, because I've got the broccoli here, I can't lay it on top the other way. I just put it that way. So nothing's going to bother it, and it's worked. Here's the pepinos. I want to get cuttings off of this plant, too. This is so sweet. These are like a little melon. Chop this up with some strawberries and papaya. You can do it any way you want. Throw some frozen blueberries in. It is so good. Look at that mustard. That's mustard coming up. So I want to get more of this growing. There's really too much in there. I've got a pepino plant, which was a tiny cutting that took off. Look how big it is. Okay. And then I've got a dinosaur kale, which was a small cutting. And then I've got the pepper plant that really got neglected because I didn't cut it back. What I might do, if I can, is I might move the pepper plant. I don't know. I'll decide. And then I should get the peppers off and use them. They're dry already. These things are hot. These are the black cobras. They start off green, then they turn black, and then they turn red. You can eat them at any stage, but they're hot. So I'll do something with that, and then I'm going to tear all these apart. I'm not going to keep the celery. I've thought about it. Okay, maybe I will. You know why? Because I love using the leaves in that coastline I make with the tree colored. I put celery leaves in there too. And even though it's a big old stocky plant, look how beautiful the leaves are. I probably will keep that. And then this is that, oh, look at that, the asparaga plant. A purple asparagus, look at that. That I would just take off before it opens, chop it up, put it in, let's say, some scrambled eggs or something. Mmm, or a stir fry. This is the asparagus plant. I had it on the deck, and I gave them all to Gary, and he missed one. And then I brought it out here, and I stuck it in there. So if I want to keep the asparagus growing, you're not going to get a ton of them, but obviously you'll get some the right way, not the way you see. The right way of doing it would be not to put broccoli in there, don't put anything else in there and just keep the asparagus plant and maybe put a flower pot in there with something. Doesn't matter, it could be flowers, nasturtiums I've got over there. It could be walking onions, but nothing that's so big. So if I want to keep this going, and I think I might, might get out some of the seeds fell in here from the broccoli. These are, bro there's a baby broccoli plant. And it's got broccoli on top. Okay, I definitely have to bring this in. Kitty will love that, beautiful. I shouldn't have anything else but the asparagus and then maybe, like I said, some walking onions in a pot. That would be the best way of doing it. And then here, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to pull all this out. You could also use these straps for a shade sun setup. So right now, as the sun goes across, it gets shade and sun underneath, see? So you can use them just to stick them in there. You can make them and just put them in your totes if you have low plants, and it will give a sunshade. This is cuttings. There's a, let me can take this off. Well, actually, I'll just pull it out or move it over right now. This is a nasturtium I pulled out of the ground. It was a little nothing plant I pulled it out of the ground. And this is a cutting, I'm not even sure. It's some sort of geranium. I don't think it's mine. I know what it is. I was walking somewhere, and there was a bush in the street 
I remember now. I couldn't remember. So I have to keep this here for my notes. And it was bushy and it was laying over and growing into the street. And I snapped a piece off. Yep, I did. Oh, good. It took. See the new growth? It took. I've had it for two months now, I think. So it did take. And then this is what I make a cold frame. I cover this up and I did my seedlings in it last year. And they grew in here and then I moved them. But they didn't all get moved. And some set root in here. So I'm going to clean all this out. Gary took out some stuff he wanted that was in there. I had some red vein sorrel. Had a few other things in there. I told him just get it out. And this will go into my garden. I am going to grow as much kale as possible this time. Be it purple, tree colored, uh, kale or colored. It doesn't matter, green, because I want to make sure I have enough fertilizer for my plants. I don't fertilize because when I do my totes in the fashion in which I do, go back and see the videos, three quarters of my containers are full of plant matter. That can be kitchen scraps. That's all plant matter. Anything that was once a plant. Then the rest of it on the top could be from another tote broken down the year before or potting soil. I want to make sure, and that's because of all that, I don't have to worry about fertilizer. Maybe as the plants are getting bigger and bigger, I want to throw something in it so I soak some rotted collard leaves and give them fertilizer that way. But the point is I want to make sure I have enough, just in case because of everything, but I keep hearing and better safe than sorry. And there's my pizza garden. I didn't redo it yet. Is that amazing? I have not done anything. So I do have time. I picked up a little time under there. And I'm going to leave the time. Oh, I see peppers. Those are pepper plants and tomatoes. I'm going to leave the time down there because I don't think the time likes a lot of sun. So it has a little bit of shade down there. That is my sage. And this is tricolored sage. I put, I don't know if you remember last year, I put a little cutting in there. And look at that. So now I have to decide what I'm going to grow in here. I've got, what do I have in here? Nothing. Good. I only have the the thistle. So I'm going to leave the thistle for the birds. See how it grows? It has green leaves. See, it's even got powdery mildew. It's not hurting anything. Then it gets a yellow flower, which the birds feed on. Hummingbirds feed on that. Different things feed on. And then it's going to get seeds. This has already been picked over. See the fuzz? The hummingbirds build their nests out of that. So I'll leave it for a little while. When they're really in my way, I just pull them out and stick them somewhere where the birds can get to them. And then I've got my different basil growing. I've got purple, and then this is more cuttings. And the cuttings set root. See, they set root. This is some rosemary. I'm gonna leave that right now, so I can always move that rosemary anywhere I want. And then I, they do have the peppers. This is last year's peppers. I was gonna start them over. They're making a comeback. So I'm gonna make sure I, what I want in here, I might take out the basil because I have plenty of basil down there. Might pull the basil out, either move it or compost it, and then get some more tomatoes in there somewhere and get the peppers growing. I don't know where I put the tomatoes. Because last year I had the tomatoes in there, but I don't want anything to happen to this. I really like that. You know what? I will put a tomato in there, but I'll put a pot in there. So the tomato will have its own pot and then it can also use the bucket as well. And then I'll get rid of the sow thistle. And once it's done, I'll just compost that. So that's it. So now you've seen everything. There's nothing else to see. I haven't gotten to that wall yet. That will be coming a little bit later. I mean, it's buzzing around. And that will be it. So I'm slowly going through. And I'm quite pleased with everything. I'm really pleased with the wall back there. I am pleased with everything. If you have questions, please ask the questions. I may not answer them right away, but I do read them. It gives me thoughts of what to talk about because a lot of stuff I talked about were questions that a lot of you asked. The other thing is I'm really appreciative of all the people that have come in to answer other people's questions. I think that's fantastic. I think that hummingbird has agreed with me that's sitting here. Answer the question if you know the answer, even if you think you know the answer, or if you've got a better way of doing it, please answer. Feel free to answer. I'm giving you permission. My blessing. Go ahead and answer the question. And I want to thank all the members. I've noticed I've picked up some more members, and I promise I'm going to do something soon for members. I'll, I may do something as boring as just turn on the camera and you'll watch me work. 
you know, like maybe make something. I've got to make a lot more of those tops. I've got a new one I'm making. Wait till you see the new one. I am so excited because they're going to be popping up everywhere and it's so easy to make. I'm not even going to give any hints. I want to get this going. So that's about it. I'm really, really happy we're into April. Our big growing season, like a lot of you, is actually May because we're still going to have this June gloom thing going on all through June. It cools down and that's why we have problems with, let's say, I love growing Korean melon. It's a yellow melon. I love growing watermelon. They don't do, they get if they don't do all that well, they get spindly. But the squash will do really good, the tomatoes, the peppers. And I've got different ways I'm going to try to set up my peppers. I want to get more celery growing. There's a lot of stuff I want to grow. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. So with that, I think I've gone through everything. I can't think of anything else. Oh, we've got to stuff a whole bunch more of these. And that's about it. Even the raven's telling me. Enough is enough. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. I just did a garden tour. So we're going to open this up as the following is a garden tour that I wandered through and did by myself. And poor Gary has no idea what I said. But at least you came down at the end to show me a big surprise. I'm hiking down the hill. Look how the weeds grow in the middle. All wild rocket. There's Gary's bees. I'm not sure what's going on. Let's take a quick peek. Oh, they're busy as me. Look at that. Cool. Half as high split off. But he still has a whole lot, and they're just going to make more and more babies. Look at the pollen on their feet. Them busy little things. Oh, he said hello to them. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, it's our turn to leave. Okay, let's get. Look at the pollen. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's keep going. Last year, the rabbit had babies in this bush. I don't know. You never know where they're going to have babies because they bury them. And then we've got the carpenter bees. Carrie said they follow them around. They're um, the horsefly-like. They are a carpenter bee, but boy, are they great pollinators. And they have a personality. It's so bizarre. They actually follow you around. They come up to me and they look at you. I want to get a photo of them because they have bright blue eyes. I don't know where they came from. They're not even supposed to be here. So they must have hitched a ride. They're not well known for being here. Look at that. This is his work area. That's the back side of my garden. Isn't that cool? It, yeah, it's area that's not being used, but you know, I might get some stuff back there this year because I do want to grow more than I need and I want to grow stuff that I don't have to work at. Just because I keep hearing stuff, and I thought, you know, you know, I might as well get as much tree color as possible. You can eat it, you can compost it. So I have food, and I have fertilizer, especially if I'm not going to grow something else. There is Gary's high tower. I don't know if he's down here. I really don't. I have no idea. This is no joke. He has no idea where I am, and he knows if I do a garden tour, he stays out of my way, so I don't lose my track my train of thought like I've already done. Oh, he's been busy. Oh, his trash can says junk pile. But he uses it when he goes to build something. He goes back in there, looks around. There's the rocks. I've been taking rocks from him. I'm locked out. I'm like, I haven't been down here since he finished it. So he's got a gate there. Somebody doesn't like deer. <laughs> Isn't that cool? No, he's not down here. I know he's been working on videos. Look at that. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, look at that. I bought him some grapes recently. I went to one of the smaller, well, not small stores. I did go to a small nursery, but I also went to Lowe's and Home Depot. And they had grapes coming in. I thought, oh, cool. Some of them, there they are. He's covering them. So the rabbits won't eat them. They had different types, and I just bought a whole bunch. Some of them were black grapes. I had never seen bla seedless black grapes. I thought that'd be cool. Look at the flowers. Let me tell you something. On a hot summer day, this is going to be the coolest place to hang out and have a cup of coffee or an iced tea. An iced tea for me. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I, I drink one or two cups in the morning. 
And I don't like a lot of hot stuff. Never have. This is really cool. I haven't seen this. That's his emu plant. And that's another emu plant. I believe this one's more of a bush. And this one grows taller. See, his cameras are there. But he's not. Tells me he's going to do a video on this. Is this beautiful? I, I haven't been here since I did the last video with you. Look at this. See, this is what I came here. I went to get the branches. And he wants to do stuff with it. So he said he'd get me my own for the bird garden. See all this? He brought these chairs down here. These are the hideous chairs that nobody likes sitting in. Now you just get older and it's like, I gotta pull myself out of here once you are in there. You don't wanna get out. He's got his clipboard with his notes. We won't spy, will we? Will we? Yeah, we're not gonna spy on his notes. And gosh, this is gorgeous. I can almost let Kitty in here, but she can go through that. Oh my goodness. This is a plant I bought years ago. I was really excited because I'd never seen a curry plant. And then I didn't like it. It's a curry plant. Hmm. Actually, it's kind of have a, almost a sweet smell. But he, I was going to take it out and then he took it. Look how beautiful it is. You can do cuttings off of that. Stinging nettles. Dangerous for me. He comes and he picks that and he makes tea in the morning. He does it a special way. He handed it to me one day and said, I eat this, taste it. I put it in my tongue, didn't know anything about it. My whole mouth swelled up like a balloon. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. So I have to be very, I won't even drink that. I mean, there's ways of treating it so it won't bother you. I am not even going to try it. After that ordeal, no, he can drink it. He said it's good for um, inflammation and stuff. Well, he can do it. After that, I will not. Look at this. An apple blossom. Really cool. No, he definitely is not down here. So he went up a different way, not to bother me in the garden. He took a tree out here. Probably one. Oh, he took a couple trees. The Brazilian peppers. I can tell you a story on that. When we got this property, he was so excited. He wanted to do a wind block and more privacy. So we have a Brazilian pepper out front. And he went and dug up all the baby seedlings and he planted them all through here. He was so excited and they grew like monsters right away. These are macadamia nuts here. Without realizing that they have a terrible root system. And they started, to, and then he started his garden afterwards later on and found out he can't get rid of them. So now he's slowly going to take them out and he's going to replace them with other trees. It's a shame they're beautiful, but he's got his guamachil back there. Now he's got the macadamia nuts he's putting. And obviously now that he's put this fence here and he won't be driving through here anymore, he's probably gonna put a new set of trees here. I'm not sure what he's gonna do. And then nothing will bother the trees. They'll be on the inside and the deer can't get to him. We could wander. He's not here. Swiss chard. This is amazing how big they'll get when you have them in a tote by themselves. He's got a bunch of them in there. I've had one plant before and the leaves are like elephant ears. They're so big. When you have one plant, remember, less is a lot of times better. This looks like, oh, these are onions. I see red onions and white onions. And these are potatoes. You know what he's been doing? He's been planting his own, but I have been trying to compost. It's probably over there. And when I composted some potato skins, because I picked up some potatoes from the store, they grew, the skins grew, and I wanted them out. I said, I'm gonna compost them back in. He said, no, 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 I'll take them. Look at this, kangaroo paw. See, south thistle growing everywhere for the birds. And then of course his dragon fruit. Let's walk in here. I don't know if he's gonna come back down or not. I know he was here. We're gonna to have to do a garden tour with him. He keeps telling me he's gonna do it. I know he's busy, he's we got work, and then he's got his garden. So he's got sage he got from me. All this sage that you see in my garden on the deck, anywhere you see sage, I bought a package once at the 99 cent store and it had a whole bunch of plants. It was like he came in a plastic little box and they had the roots. So I started planting them and they grew. A lot of them grew. So that's why we've got all this sage, this eggplant. This is amazing what he's got in here. His garden, oh, I can hear all the birds in here. His garden is perfect. He's got this top. This was here when we got the property. 
I don't know what they were going to build or what this was all about, but this creates sunshade. So even on the hottest day, they're getting sun. So think about it, when the plants are just too hot and ready to fall over and fry, or the leaves are ready to wilt, it goes in the shade. Then they're happy. Then they cool down. Then they get sun again. So that goes on all day. Look at the tree colored. He too wants to get a lot going. His rhubarb, look at that. And then of course he's got, this is dazzling blue kale. Look at all that. He's got raspberries or blackberries back here. See, all this is plant food. See what he does? And then he's got this. And he feeds his plants. And if you ever see wigglers in there, I'm not sure if there is, just dump it. It's plant food. He's probably going to dump it if there's any wigglers in there. And this is sweet potato. This is his shark fin melon. Those things just take off everywhere. Look at this. Um, more tree colored. Look at this. All this. This is what I'm saying. If you've got space and tree, you saw it, tree color will grow in the smallest pot. It's not fussy. All it wants is water. Give tree colored water, rot a couple leaves periodically, once a month, once every two months, feed it some rotten leaves. See, shark fin melon, and there's a flower next to it. You know, on the ground there's a flower. Then your plant will grow. It will grow in a really small pot. You've seen them, but they'll outgrow the pot. All you have to do is do cuttings and compost the whole thing. And then he's got his pepinos growing. Now he's got them on the ground and he loses some of them. Things take him and run off with them, probably the squirrels, because they taste so good. I've got mine up on the chair and the squirrels won't go up on the chair. Even the tree squirrels won't go up on the chair. And he's got passion fruit growing all through here. It's all passion fruit. I can't tell you everything because I'm not sure on everything. We grow differently, it probably saves our marriage. We actually do grow differently. Now, he swore he was not going to grow in totes. You remember that. But he is growing in totes because there's some things that just work out better in totes. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Well, pasture fruit's cloudy today, too. I'm hoping you can see enough. Oh, look. Uh, passion fruit, I guess. Look at it. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. No, this... You know, that must be pepinos. Here's the pepinos. Yeah, it's pepinos. See? What I should do, I don't have time, is come down here and make a little, put a little tool around it. Here's more pepinos. What I have to do is come down here and get some more off of him. They are passion for, our passion for, our pepinos do not have seeds. Thank goodness the very first fruit I bought from the grocery store had, I think, three seeds in it. But ours do not. They're not fertile. That's okay. It's okay. It's good and bad, but it's okay because you can take a piece and cut, do a cutting and it grows so well. So I had one in my yard, something happened to it and I came and got a cutting off of his and that's the one that's in my rainbow garden. It'd be nice to have seeds. Now, why would it be nice to have seeds? If you had seeds, you would be creating three, let's say you had three seeds and grew three plants. You would be creating three separate plants. So let's say some sort of plant problem came through. The plant problem issue, I don't want to call it a virus, but whatever, mildew, mold. So let's say something came through. It may not attack all three plants because everything's an individual like people. But if you have them all exactly the same and something comes through and they're cloned, it could wipe out everything. That's why sometimes it's good to have a little bit of different plants in there because this way they're not exactly the same. I'm not sure. Turnip? I'm not sure. Gary knows. There's mustard. He got it from me. And I think I gave him some more. And I'm sure he... Pl Look at this. I don't know where he is. Here's his nasturtiums. This is Malabar spinach. That's from last year. It's been sheltered enough to still hang on all winter. And then the ones up against the wall died back. They don't like the cold. Let's see what else there is. I'm trying to figure out where I can go across and not fall in. Oh my gosh, I can't think what you call it. No, I can't get through. He's blocked everything. Oh, I can't remember. It's some sort of water chestnut thing. And then he's got here. I haven't seen all this. This is all new. This is all new. Some of these are going to have like strawberries. It's got strawberries going. That is Thai mint. I believe it's Thai. More sweet potatoes. This looks like potatoes. Maybe it's my potatoes. I gave him some potatoes. 
I said, get him out. There's the sorrel. I told you I told him to take out my rainbow garden. So he's got sorrel. And then let's go through here. I'm not going to wander the whole yard. Look at that. You know where he got a lot of these? My daughter. My daughter, who complains about her tree collards that are all over her yard, are dropping leaves everywhere. And now she's got, no joke, hundreds and hundreds of strawberry plants everywhere and she's been screaming so Gary went out she wants them out so Gary keeps going over there to get more and more and then she calls me there's more and you know what it is it's because the tree collard and everything that's falling is creating all that rich soil she's just in the city a small tiny garden I think you've seen it and it just keeps growing everything I don't know oh I can go through this way and then we can call it quits let's walk around over here Look at the nasturtiums, aren't they beautiful? I think they came up on their own. I don't remember him planting them. More purple mustard. And don't worry about it. Stuff. Look at the insects. It brings birds. And you know what? Anything you want like that, you can compost. You don't worry about insects. Nature wants... You know, let me tell you something. A lot of times when you see a plant covered in that many insects, nature's calling it back. Something's not right. It's either done or the soil conditions aren't right, temperature's not right. It's probably done. Look at the size of the trunk on it. And nature calls it back. Nature sends the insects. The insects are doing what they're supposed to do. I don't know. I don't know. And he's got, look at that. Dragon fruit everywhere. Just think, this year, oh my gosh. We can never eat enough dragon fruit. We, can, we eat a ton of it. My grandkids eat it. Oh, the hummingbirds love this. Canis. Oh my gosh. This is ponds gorgeous. See how yellow they look? Okay, you know what? I don't have a pocket on this shirt. This one's soft. I'm gonna grab this. Oh, I'm on the oops, I'm on the wrong side. I hear a hummingbird screaming. When they're this yellow, they're gonna be sweet like sugar really really sweet when you pick them when they're not quite yellow but they're still soft if they're not sweet then you cook them you use them that way because they don't taste good really raw i'm gonna take two hopefully i'll remember and come back for them because they're oh he's got a ton of them you know i asked him the other day oh well things get them i don't think so look at that passion fruit let's see oh his can has got so big they fell over Look at that. Look at this pond. This is the first pond. And I don't know. He's got all kinds of water plants in here. So he's got all kinds of stuff. And then back there, of course, is the sweet potatoes. And then his bananas. It's been really hard on the bananas this year. The plants. We've had a lot of wind. We've had a lot of freezing cold weather. I'm literally in the 30s. So it really did a toll on them. But all in all, I think they look gorgeous. And when the weather warms up and you trim all the brown stuff off, it'll be beautiful. I mean, he's got a lot of pups around, so nothing, you know, happened to him. There's a new one back there. But soon they'll be, oh, there's a, oh, there's bananas. Hey, there's bananas. Got to be careful. I'll get my feet stuck on this, and then I'll end up falling over. So he's got bananas there. We had hummingbirds went nest. Yeah, they once nested in here. And then more bananas there, and I saw... Oh, that is it. So it's, I don't know if that one will make it. It might be too cold, but that one's going to make it. That one's good size already. So let's keep going. Nasturtiums are gorgeous. That's where I found the little plant actually out front, and I pulled it and brought it in. It's growing in my garden. Let's see what else is here. Oh, Swiss chart tree. Uh, tree. No, I don't know how it's growing. It is! It's just a Swiss chard tree. Look at that. Jeez, how beautiful. I love green Swiss chard. I like just taking it and cooking it like spinach, just breaking it off, washing the leaves, putting in a pot, a little bit of water, bringing it to a boil, shutting it off, straining it, and putting butter on it. That's my favorite way. See, I've always loved spinach, even as a kid. It's funny, the stuff I would eat and the stuff I wouldn't eat. That is beautiful. And then let's see. I don't know if I can get through here. This one's got yellow flowers. Let's see if we can get, I can't get through. Let me switch hands for a minute. I'm gonna be trapped in here, the yellow flowers. And these will have seeds in them later. 
And then he's got more stuff here. I don't know. Some sort of vines. It could be sweet potatoes. It could be anything. I, I don't know. And then he's got plants growing. Oh, these are the ones I started for him. These are edible. Are these beautiful? These are edible. They were so tiny, the seeds. And then when the plants were growing, he was so excited. You needed a magnifying glass to see them. And look at them now. We've got a whole package of seeds. I should get him some more seeds growing. Because I want to start a whole ton of seeds. My daughter said she'll take anything I offer her. I am not going to go that way. So that's it. So now you got to see. Oh, bird just flew by. And he's like, oh, somebody's in here. Isn't that gorgeous? It's wild. His garden is wild, literally wild. But I think that's what really does help is we actually do our own gardening and we do it our own way and we have our own ideas. A lot of times you know, oh, it isn't gonna work. Okay, well, you know, and he has his idea. And I think if you've got a garden and there's two of you wanting the garden, the best way, oh, let's get this or I'll forget it. The best way to do it, I think this is fennel down here with the fine leaf is do your own garden. Blueberries, so that's where you put the blueberries. I knew we planted blueberries. This is jungle. What he needs is a chair in here, not outside. Here's where you want to sit. But oh, collard, definitely want to plant as much green collard. For a while there, I wasn't using it. So it was like, what am I going to do with that? But now that I'm making the coleslaw, it's so good, and there's no bite to it or anything. I've got to try to do a few other things. I've got other ideas I want to do with it. Now I, I can grow as much as I want, and I will come down here and grab a whole bunch. Healthy plants don't tend to get insects. Keep that in mind. So when you get a lot of insects, there's something off. Maybe, maybe they do need a little help with some fertilizer. You soak some leaves. It doesn't matter what kind of leaves. You can do even Swiss chard. And then just water it back. You know, or they're not getting enough water, or they're getting too much water, too much sun, too little sun. They're gonna get some insects, okay? Because insects are natural. But if you bring in the birds, they'll, they'll keep everything. You want it under control is what it is. Don't worry about a few insects. And like I said, take a, get a good nozzle, something that's really comfortable in your hand, and blast them off. Just take the hose and blast them off. And that's gonna take care of a lot of your issues. Believe you me, when you blast them off, they're not coming back. They're not that smart. All right, so we did a zip. At this. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know if he wanted this plant here and it started to grow and he left it. But they always scare me when they have points. He used to have yuccas growing it a long time ago. I used to cut the points off because the kids were little. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. But I can't wait to see his tunnel. That's going to be beautiful. Do we, we, we go this way? I'm gonna run out of battery. I've already done my garden. I don't have any more batteries on me. Yeah, we did. That was the first place we walked by. These things look nasty. Look at that. I can't think of the name. La, la, la Chi? I can't think of the name. But look at the thorns on that. I want, wouldn't want to meet that in the middle of the night. Isn't that gorgeous? He said he heard frogs last night. He was so excited. Were they coming from my garden? I don't know. But if he thinks they were... He definitely, definitely will be sitting down here looking for frogs. He was so excited he had frogs last year. Okay, I think that was it. I guess he's going to come back because it looks like he is working in here. It looks like he is filming in here. I mean, he wouldn't leave his cameras out here. And that's basically it. I just thought I'd take you for a walk. I was hoping he'd be down here, but he's not. But that's okay. Looky, looky, I was just leaving. He's coming down now, and my battery's almost dead. There he is. I told you he's working on a video. I just walked through your garden. Say hello. So Gary did come down. I already did a full garden tour without you. We'll have to do it with you one day so you can tell me what's what. You just told me you wanted to show me something. A hummingbird nest. Let's see if a hummingbird nest. No, I have not seen it. I picked some pepinos. You don't care, right? No, I don't care. It's not, not easy to get to. 
Well, I, you've been, you'd be surprised. Let me put this down here. Hopefully remember to come back and get it. I have wandered all over here. Oh, cool. I'm glad you came down. I figured you'd come back because I saw the camera. I just wandered out of my garden. Oh, oh my god! There's two babies in there. They've hatched already. Oh my gosh! On this thing? On this thing, yeah. That's an old ube or purple yam. I've never seen anything like this. I don't want to touch it. Look at that. There's two babies. I don't know if I can touch the leaf. That's why she was zipping around my head. I don't want to bother it. I can't believe yeah, this So low. they've nested in my bananas, and I don't know if it's the same one that's come back again, but I found this a week or so ago, and there was two eggs. What in the world is giving them shelter? Just the leaf, the old leaves above it. And oh, I don't. Fairly, a fairly sheltered area. We don't, when we got the hail storm, the hail didn't come in here. That is so, amazing. And this is the south wall so this is like there's not much um of an air current in here so that's, it'd be a nice comfortable place that's why she's been sipping around my head when i walked around oh i'm gonna leave i i can't believe how open that is i've never seen anything i've seen it on the house but never seen anything that is that open like that what a weird place for her to build it because anything can see it I wonder if you'd be better off to cut the bottom ube so nothing can crawl up of it. Or is that alive? No, that's... nothing's going to try to get up that. Oh my gosh, that that's a sight to see. That's a first. With the babies. All right, I'm going to back off. Oh, I'm glad you came down because I didn't know about that. You mentioned it, but I had no idea. I would never have found it. If you would have said, go in the garden, there's a nest, oh. I would never... I just walked by this. I literally yeah, walked. I started clear, clearing the vines. You see, I've cleared the vines down this end, and then you know, I got to here and I saw the nest and it had eggs in it. And I thought, is it from last year or this year? I stood back and she came back in, and sat on her eggs. So it's, I left it. It's starting to rain, I think. That's possible. Oh no! All right, I'll let you go back and work on your video. I just wandered down after doing my garden tour, so I'll let you end this. Bye. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and um, thanks for watching. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye bye. He doesn't even know what I talked bye. about. So I just came in from the garden. You think she'll recognize that we've got broccoli in a simple scrambled egg with some cheese? Let's see if she'll know this is broccoli. Is that broccoli? Oh yeah. You want more? A little bit more. This is my breakfast, but I am very happy to share. No onions, no nothing. Just two eggs chopped up piece of broccoli and I snuck in a little bit of greens Oi. okay all right one, one happy dog yes you are yes you are and a smart girl too